All right, hello everybody. My name is Sherry Placco and I am here with my amazing friend, Stacy Cook. And we are here to teach you how to read labels. Um, it's scary when we think about what's in the products that we use with um, like not even being aware of how bad they are for us. And it's okay if you don't know, like, how do you know? You know better than you do better. And we're going to help you learn how to do better tonight. So as I said, my name is Sherry Placco, and I live in the Chicago area. And um, I just want to tell you a little bit about how I got started with Young Living. Um, back in the spring of 2015, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune. Now, I had had debilitating asthma my entire lifetime. And then all of a sudden, this autoimmune kicked in as well. And I took a whole lot of meds and um, didn't really get any relief. And I saw an advertisement for a class, just like this one that you're here at tonight. And it may have been called, are you looking for something better? But it was being taught by Stacy. And I met her at a local library and she started to talk to me about essential oils. Now I, until that point thought essential oils were like these hippie things that just made your house smell good. Um, little did I know. I remember the first thing that I learned and I went home and freaked out was about air fresheners and how bad they are for you. And we're going to tell you about that tonight. Um, but it's been an amazing journey for me. And from that very first class, when I started learning about how toxins impact my overall health and wellness, I knew I had to do better for myself and for my family. And that's when I started my journey with Young Living. And we are going to share so many amazing things with you tonight. So I hope that you have a notepad ready because it's a lot of amazing information. And I am going to throw it over to Stacy so she can let you know all about her. Thank you so much, Sherry. Can you hear me okay? Awesome. Um, my name is Stacy Cook and uh, I want to share a little bit, just like Sherry did, about how I got started on this path of label reading and being hyper aware of all of the things and all the products I use. And for me, it started about nine years ago when I was pregnant. And up until that point, I had been very aware of the things I put in my body and I tried to eat really healthy. I, I still do try to eat healthy, but I had no clue about the products I was putting on my body. I wasn't really thinking about it or concerned about it at all. Um, and I had a friend tell me, uh, she had a baby before I did. And when she was pregnant, I remember her telling me, my doctor told me I have to stop using this medicated cream I have because it could harm my baby. And at the time I was like, okay, like I didn't really think too much about it. But fast forward a year when I was pregnant myself, that came back to me and I thought about how you know, typically we think about our skin as being this barrier that protects us, but our skin is actually very much a carrier of things into our bodies. And all of a sudden I had this new perspective being, you know, a soon to be mom and wanting to do all the protecting. And I became very concerned about the products that I was going to be using. So I wanted to make my own. And I did a lot of research and I found that I could make some of my own DIY skincare products. And that's really how I started becoming a label reader, doing some of my own things. That's how I ended up starting using essential oils, learning about companies who have clean products. And um, it's kind of been a journey ever since then. So tonight we are going to answer why we need to read labels, what we need to look for, and how to find cleaner and safer alternatives. So first, it's important to understand why we can't necessarily trust that everything on the shelves at Target is totally safe for our families. And the reason for that goes back to the Toxic Substance Control Act of 1976. And what this act did was it grandfathered in hundreds of chemicals that can be used in our household personal care products and cleaning products without any safety testing and very little understanding of any harmful side effects. So that act puts the onus on the consumer to prove that an individual ingredient is harmful versus the manufacturer having to 
prove that the ingredients are actually safe. So because of this, label reading is going to be your new best friend. Um, and when I say label reading, I don't just mean picking up the products and looking at the label, which can um, often be misleading, you know, if we're just looking at like the look and feel of a label. Um, and we call that greenwashing because what happens is that a company will use natural looking colors, um, they'll use language and taglines that make you think you're selecting a healthier option from among all the dish soaps that you see, you know, on the shelf at Target. Um, yet the product can still be packed with the same uh, toxic ingredients. So just because the marketing on the package says something is healthy, doesn't mean the ingredients are going to tell the same story. So the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health studied 2,983 ingredients in household products and found that 884 of them, that's one third, nearly one in three ingredients to be toxic to humans, causing everything from biological mutations to cancer tumors, and many of these ingredients are allowed, allowed in common cleaning supplies in the United States. Things that are probably under your kitchen sink right now. So 26 seconds after exposure, chemicals are found in measurable amounts in the human body. And our bodies do not know what to do with many of these chemicals. They do not follow our body's natural detox pathways. They can remain stuck in our bodies leading to bioaccumulation. And um, what does bioaccumulation looks like, look like? Uh, it looks like everything is fine until it's not. Your body reaches a tipping point of toxin overload. And that's when the autoimmune shows up out of nowhere or infertility or cancer. And this is why we need to read our labels and find a company with transparency that only uses the highest quality clean ingredients. So we're going to take a closer look at what ingredients present a risk to you and your family. And before I get specific, let me start by saying that many harmful chemicals can impact our endocrine system. And you're going to hear that multiple times. Our endocrine systems are so, so, so important to our overall health and well-being. Our endocrine systems use hormones like cortisol, melatonin, estrogen, testosterone, serotonin, and more to control and coordinate many, many processes in our body, including our metabolism, our energy levels, reproduction, growth and development, response to injury, stress, sleep, and even our mood. So it's very important that we do not whack out our endocrine system, okay? Now, now is a good time to make sure that you have your notepad um, because you're gonna wanna write down some of these things. Uh, the first ingredient that I want you to be on the lookout for is formaldehyde. So this is a preservative. It's often seen in air fresheners, candles, lotions, cosmetics, and even baby wipes. Uh, it's a known carcinogen, and a carcinogen means that it's been linked to cancer, and it can cause skin and respiratory irritations. It's also what's used for embalming bodies, if that tells you anything. Uh, inhaling scents from formaldehyde containing candles and sprays is the equivalent of inhaling secondhand smoke which is just as dangerous, if not more, than smoking a cigarette itself. So we definitely want to avoid formaldehyde. Another one is phthalates. Um, phthalates are a group of chemicals found in personal care products, cleaning products, many plastics and vinyls. And because of the danger that phthalates present, they have even been banned from children's toys, yet they are still found in household products and allowed in household products. They're known to disrupt the endocrine system and they're very, very hard for the body to break down when exposed regularly. They can affect um, reproductive health, endocrine system, and they've been linked to cancer as well. Now I'm gonna send it back to Sherry to talk about a few more things you wanna make sure that you are looking for on labels. Thanks, Stacy. So um, formaldehyde, seriously, that was in my air fresheners. When she told me that way back in 2015, I was like, um, I need to go home and throw out everything in my house. I was basically like pushing out like cancer causing agents to my family every 90 seconds. Like, how do you know that's in there until you learn about it? So now I want to talk about sodium lauryl sulfate. Now, if you're an avid label reader like Stacy and I, then SLS is no stranger to you. 
It's commonly found in body washes, shampoos, facial cleansers, and soaps. And it's the main ingredient in cleaning products. But what is SLS? Like, what does it do? And why is there a lot of controversy around it? Um, if you look at the screen in that picture, it was created as an industrial degreaser meant to get grease off of garage floors. Look at that ad. It was in a product called Gunk. Look at what it does. Okay. Now, that sodium lauryl sulfate is a big word. So what is it? It is a surfactant that lowers the surface tension of aqueous substances and used as an emulsifier. Okay, I'm not a sciencey girl, don't worry. Let me tell you in basic language what that all really means. It's a substance that is very, very good at cleaning surfaces. That's why you find them in dishwashing liquid, laundry soap, spray cleaners, and those emulsifying properties is what allows soap and water to kind of mix. And that's why they're in so many skincare products and lotions and creams. So it's what makes things lather. Can you think of things you use that lather? Um, toothpaste, right? That was the first thing that popped into my head when I heard about SLS. Go look at your toothpaste. Industrial degreaser in your toothpaste. Yum. Shampoo. Hmm. Here's the problem with SLS. Most of the time it's synthetically derived and it can cause irritation. So it is not good. Now, because it's in so many industrial cleaning products, like engine degreasers, floor cleaners, car wash products, there are workplace protections that can be implemented to avoid unsafe exposures. And if you pay attention to a lot of the labels in the stores right now, you are going to see so many products that say sulfate free. Hmm. Okay. But what's the deal then if they're sulfate free? Well, I already told you that sulfates are powerful at cleaning. So while it might be convenient for washing dis dishes, it's less advantageous for cleansing your skin. They're very aggressive substances. They strip your skin of their natural oils and they're, therefore your like skin barrier gets kind of broken, which is what causes skin issues. Um, when they manufacture SLS, it's derived from petroleum. Petroleum, aside from containing toxic substances, is non-renewable and it's not a sustainable source. So workers who manufacture SLS are exposed to these harmful substances and at a high risk for having like chronic health effects. So every time that you're buying something with SLS, you're contributing to this unsustainable supply chain. But the problem is the government says, you know what, we're going to let it be in your products because for it to be considered dangerous by the powers that be, it would have to be in contact with your skin for a longer period of time. And because generally with consumer products, we're washing things away that have SLS, they assume it won't be on your skin for long. So the chance of you being impacted is really low. So they don't ban it, but they say there can only be a maximum percentage in the product. Um, that's not good enough for me. Your toothpaste, it's in your mouth. You are absorbing some of that in stuff from that's in your mouth. You absorb it into your body times 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Remember that bioaccumulation Stacey talked about? I shouldn't have to worry about how long a product's going to be in contact with my skin for me to know it's okay to use it. All consumer and cosmetic product manufacturers are required to conduct testing and include adverse effects in the form of their warnings on the label. So if on a product that has SLS, you see something like, oh, if this, if this product causes any skin redness, irritation, discontinue use. Um, yeah, that shouldn't be on anything I'm using on my skin. So look for that sodium lauryl sulfate because it's really easy to swap out. All right, that was a lot. So now I'm going to go easy on you. Triclosan is the other big one. A lot of us heard about this the last few years because triclosan is an agent that is added to products to help prevent bacterial contamination. Remember all that hand sanitizer we've been using for years and years? Um, it's added to antibacterial soaps, body washes, and even some toothpaste and cosmetics. 
products that are regulated by the US FDA. But it's also found in clothing, kitchenware, furniture, toys, products not regulated by the FDA. This can affect your thyroid and endocrine system, and it's recently been banned by the FDA for antiseptic washes, but it's still allowed in other products. So, oh, and these are just a few of the chemicals, but these are in so many products that are probably in your home and you weren't even aware of. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Stacy for another biggie. So hold on everybody. Thank you, Sherry. Um, yes, this is a big one and that's fragrance. Synthetic fragrance can appear on a label and contain up to 300 ingredients that the company is not required to disclose because it's considered a trade secret. So you definitely want to be on the lookout for fragrance and you need to understand that it means much more than just one ingredient that you're trying to avoid. Companies are not required to reveal the actual chemicals that are within the fragrance category. Um, because it's, you know, considered proprietary. So it really keeps, um, you know, you in the dark about the true toxicity of the products that we use for our families and even our pets. Remember that whatever you're cleaning your floor with, your shower with, um, it's being absorbed by both your human and furry family members. Fragrance contains many ingredients like phthalates that are linked to cancer, reproductive and developmental toxicity and allergies. Like there's no need to take the risk. So um, what happens when we use these products on yourself and your children? Like I mentioned before, the toxins build up in the body, which has a hard time breaking them down. Over time, the buildup happens faster than the breakdown and that can lead to serious health issues. And you may not notice it today, uh, but over time you will. And you may never even make the connection to the cause. So after this class, we want you to go and take a quick peek at the back of some of the bottles in your cabinet and see if you see any of the ingredients that we've mentioned. Um, because you will also be armed by the end of this class with some alternatives that you can use instead. And these are just a handful of the ingredients you want to avoid when bringing products into your home. Uh, if the idea of reading every label that comes into your house sounds exhausting, don't worry. We have some solutions and safe options to share with you. And we're not sharing this information to freak you out. And this is totally a no judgment zone because both Sherry and I have used all of these things on ourselves, our kids, our dogs, all of it. Um, but once we learned the information that we're sharing today, we were equipped to make decisions that felt right for us and our families. And our hope is that you will walk away today equipped to make the decisions that are right for your family. Uh, it's why we're here teaching today and teaching this class. So I'm gonna send it back to Sherry um, to share a little more. Thank you. And one thing I wanted to point out is when you look at the screen, you can see that that is like a clean product, but notice the word fragrance in there. So, so many of those products that you think are good for you, they still have some of those things in there. So be sure you're reading your labels. You want to know what you're bringing into your house. So before we talk about how you can replace it, I want to talk a little bit about why Stacy and I are going to recommend that you replace some of those unsafe products and you switch them to Young Living products. Because realistically, I don't have hours and hours to read labels and research. I wanna just know I can go somewhere and get things that are safe for my family. So Young Living is the only company to back their items with what they call a C to CO quality commitment. And you can rest assured that you're getting a quality product made with the highest quality essential oils and other naturally derived ingredients. So some of the ways that they do that is that they have plant material that is grown on our corporately owned farms or carefully vetted partner farms that you can visit. We have farms all over the world. Stacy and I have been to farms in Utah and in Idaho, and you can go to farms that are all over the world. It's amazing. It is very open and transparent. There's sustainable farming and sourcing practices. Great care is taken to protect and preserve our natural resources. We have hand weeded fields and zero use of pesticides. That's so important. We have oils that retain all of their natural constituents and beneficial properties. We have the use of food grade distillers with state of the art design and distillation methods. 
um, rigorous testing on each batch by both internal labs and third-party facilities. And oils are very carefully reviewed through every step of production in order to meet or exceed industry standards and purity safety standards beyond organic. And the best part is, if they don't meet these high standards, they're rejected and they will never be in a Young Living product. And you can check out all of this on a website that's just seedtoseal.com because it is amazing when you see what Young Living does to ensure that the products are safe for you. And now Stacy is going to start to tell you how you can ditch some of that stuff that's in your house now and switch to something that's safe. Thank you, Sherry. Yes. So um, the cleaning products that we're going to share um, and that we've switched over to in our own homes are all based on the Young Living Thieves Essential Oil Blend. So this is Young Living's most popular and well-known blend, literally beloved by millions of customers around the world. That is not an exaggeration. Uh, to understand the purpose of the Thieves Blend, we have to go back to the 14th century and a story of literal thieves during the Black Plague. These thieves were also spice traders and they found great success robbing the bodies of dead and dying plague victims. They also found that they could protect themselves from getting ill themselves by using a specific blend of herbs and spices and aromatics. And the Thieves Essential Oil Blend is based on that combination. It includes clove, cinnamon, rosemary, lemon, and eucalyptus radiata essential oils. Thieves is extremely cleansing. It's um, something that we diffuse regularly in our home during the winter. We also like to use it topically. It is um, really fantastic for just loving on your body's immune system. I even like to dilute it with a little bit of coconut oil because it has that cinnamon and clove in it. So it is a little spicy. So you don't wanna put it directly on your skin, but you can dilute it with some coconut oil. And I like to put it on the bottoms of my feet and just give my body a little like immune love before bed, especially, um, you know, you know that season that we're all in the middle of. Um, so the power of Thieves is why Thieves household cleaner is a staple in our home. I use it to clean everything. It cleans glass, mirrors, counters, tub, tile, toilets, everything, um, even floors. It's a concentrate. So one bottle, this is one bottle of your Thieves household cleaner, but this makes 25 spray bottles. Okay. So that's a lot and it goes a long way. Um, it's got no harsh chemical ingredients. It's perfect for cleaning my floors. Um, I like that because I, my dog like licks everything off the floor. Um, she just licks everything. Uh, so I put, um, I just mop with like, you know, a bucket of hot water, one capful of thieves. I'll add a little bit of lemon essential oil too. Lemon is a really great clean booster. So it's great for whitening things and degreasing, degunking kind of. It just, you know, cleans things like that really well. So I add lemon too. And um, it makes your house smell amazing. Just it's, if you only could have one product, the Thieves Household Cleaner would be it. Now, Young Living has done us a solid and they've made some specific cleaning products. So you don't have to just use one. But if you had to, you could. Now, the dish soap is another one I want to share with you. Because like Sherry was talking about that SLS. So that is something that I don't want on my dishes. And I also don't want it on my eight-year-old. So he has recently taken on dishes for his chores, which I absolutely love. This has been a major breakthrough in my home. Um, but the last thing I want is for him to be spending a lot of time with his hands in SLS or synthetic fragrances. Like I don't need endocrine system disruption for my eight-year-old. So um, we use the Thieves dish soap. Now it is all clean ingredients. It is extremely concentrated. So some people I know will take that one bottle and dilute it down into three bottles, which you can totally do. Or you can exhibit just a little bit of self-control and just use a smidge when you squeeze the bottle. So it's all up to you. Um, but it, it will go a long, long way. 
I know some people also like to put a pump on it because I think it's easier to like control the amount you use when you put it into a pump bottle. Now, one last kitchen swap that I really love, um, which is a little bit different. It's not so much about cleaning our houses, but it's about cleaning our food. And that is the Thieves Fruit and Veggie Soak, this guy. This is fantastic. Um, it's for cleaning your fruits and vegetables, obviously, and you only need a little bit. Again, it's really concentrated. So this is a 16 ounce bottle and you just use one capful. It's a tiny cap too, one capful in like a sink full of water to clean your fruits, vegetables, any of your produce. Um, I also find that it makes my produce last longer after I clean it. It includes several thieves or several Young Living oil blends. Um, it's got Digest, Purification, and Thieves in there. They're um, very cleansing. And it's also got um, some like enzyme action. So a little cross usage tip for you. If you have some like really uh, stinky laundry, you can put some in your wash machine and it'll really freshen it up or you can use it as a pre-treatment on stains, just like rub a little bit into like whatever is stained and it will help a whole lot. And I love when we can find, you know, multiple ways to use one product. And with Young Living, we actually do that with a lot of our products. So I'm gonna let Sherry uh, share some swaps in other areas of the house. Thanks. Yeah, that fruit and veggie soak is like my ride or die. Um, I won't eat anything unless it's been cleaned in that. And it keeps your produce fresher longer. So it's awesome. So now I'm gonna talk about the bathroom and the laundry. Like, oh yay. Like who likes to clean a bathroom? Not me. Um, but the first thing that's really important in your bathroom is your foaming soap. Remember that SLS? Mm -hmm. Well, ours is free of SLS. It is a thieves foaming soap. So it's got thieves, lemon, and orange essential oils. It's amazing. It's formulated without any dyes, colorants. There's no parabens, no petrochemicals, and no sulfates. So get rid of those smelly, fragrance-filled foaming soaps. I know some people like to go to that store, but think about what you're putting on your skin. Um, and I'm not a fan of scrubbing the tub. Anybody? Anybody? Um, and I'm really not a fan of needing to wear a mask or gloves due to all the toxic chemicals. I remember when I was a kid, we had like that, what is it, Ajax or Comet? Remember that can? And you would like shake it all over and all the dust would come up and you would be choking on it. Yeah. Hopefully I wasn't alone doing that, right? Um, well, we have our own amazing kitchen and bath scrub. It is amazing for everything and it's very gentle. It's non-scratching. So I use it to clean my bathroom and my kitchen surfaces. Um, it, get, it gets all of that tough scrubbing powder from minerals that are responsibly mined from sources in Ontario, Canada. There's baking soda in it to absorb odors. Um, it's just a powerful boost of cleaning. And of course it's got Thieves Blend in there. I use it even on my stainless steel. I love it on my sinks. It's very non-abrasive. So it's great for everything. And now everyone's least favorite job, well, unless it's me, um, laundry. So I used to be that girl, in addition to the air fresheners and the candles that were bad, I needed all the fabric softener and dryer sheets until I learned what was in them. And I knew I needed an alternative. So the easiest switch you can make before I even talk about laundry, is those dryer sheets. People, those dryer sheets are literally just chemical coated pieces of, I don't know what, your wet clothes are being tossed in there. And then you are putting those clothes on your body and they sit there all day to absorb all the chemicals that you tossed your clothes in. Yeah, so grab yourself some old dryer balls, put a few drops of essential oil on there. You don't need a dryer sheet anymore. Fabric softener. I don't buy that smelly stuff either. Did you know that you can replace your fabric softener with vinegar? I do. Um, it softens your fabrics without using harsh chemicals. And it also prevents static, which means that lint and pet hair is less likely to cling to your clothing. And I have two dogs, so that's like huge for me. 
And now, of course, we have to talk about the detergent. Um, we have a plant-based formula, um, the Thieves Laundry Soap. Again, this is super, super concentrated. Um, this little bottle actually gives you 64 loads with just 32 ounces. Um, it is a very small cap and you literally need like a quarter of it. It's great for HE. And just like that dish soap when Stacy was saying like, have a little bit of like restraint. It was really hard for me in the beginning because you want to see all the bubbles and the foaming and the all the, you don't need that. That's all the, just those extra chemicals giving you that appearance of getting clean. This is amazing. Um, there's no sodium lauryl sulfate. There's no fragrance. Our soap is scented with bergamot, jade, lemon, and other essential oils in the Thieves blend to give you a great refreshing scent without any hidden synthetic fragrances. Now, my husband's in the construction field, and I have been using this for years now. Um, and sometimes if his clothes are really dirty or a little extra stinky, I actually will add a drop of or two of lemongrass right into the soap dispenser with this. And I also use that on my wool dryer balls. So we have talked about a whole lot, and now I'm going to kick it back to Stacy to tell you how you can get some of these things. Thank you, Sherry. Um, yes, we have shared a whole lot. So hopefully you took some notes. You have some things that you're going to look for when you're shopping. And we gave you some ideas of simple swaps. You know, Sherry talked about like vinegar for her fabric softener, just easy things you probably already have on hand at home. And then you can take it to the next level by ordering some of these clean products um, the best deal is this Thieves Bundle. It's the Thieves Loyalty Bundle. It includes everything that Sherry and I talked about um, for swaps in our homes. It includes the Thieves Household Cleaner, the laundry detergent, the fruit and veggie soak, the scrub, the dish soap, the foaming soap, a bottle of lemon, a bottle of Thieves. I mean, it's the whole shebang. It's all you really need. Um, to basically take everything out from under the kitchen sink that's got all of those ingredients that we listed that you want to avoid and replace them with something that's going to be safe and not harmful for your family. So when you order this bundle, it's going to be, um, you're going to make it a loyalty order. And that's going to do two things for you. It is going to make sure that you unlock a 24% discount for, um, for at least a year. And so you can order anything, you know, if you run out of laundry soap in a few months, you can order again and you'll get that 24% discount. And all you have to do is order the one bottle. You don't have to order a bundle again. And it's also going to get you some loyalty rewards points, which are basically dollars that you can spend in the future when you want to order your, you know, replacement bottle of laundry soap. So um, for this, you know, when you order this one, um, this bundle this month, you would get a total of like $20 in loyalty rewards points, which is fantastic. So um, that's how you want to do it. Now um, you can go ahead and get back to whoever invited you to watch this video. They'll be able to give you the link to, for, and the best way to order. Um, and Sherry is going to tell you a little bit more about what you're going to do after that. So when you place that first order of that bundle on a loyalty reward, Young Living is doing something really amazing for you. Loyalty means you are going to keep trying something new, right? You're loyal to your products. So in your second month that you are with Young Living, if you place a loyalty order of 50 PV, which is point value, or more, they will send you a free diffuser. So that thieves and lemon that came in the bundle, you can now put that in your diffuser too. And some easy things you can do, you could add some whitening toothpaste. Yes, we have SLS free toothpaste. We have amazing um, mouthwash. We have hand sanitizers and you can add some lavender essential oil. It, you can order anything. We have thousands of products but you only have to spend 50 PV to get a free diffuser in your second month. So whoever sent you to this class, they will help you coordinate that and help you decide and learn what you could use next. It's just too good not to use. 
Absolutely. And one thing I really want to emphasize is that um, Young Living is, um, it has amazing products. I use them multiple times every day in my home. Um, they've changed my life in many ways. But one thing that Young Living also has is incredible community. And Sherry, I did not know before um, she came to my class and she's now one of my closest and best friends. Uh, and I have that story with a lot of people. So Young Living also brings community. Uh, we have a lot of resources and ways to get connected. Um, so the, uh, you can have the information you need for your family and also the connections that you need. Um, it's been a really fulfilling experience for me and I know others have had that experience too. So when you get started um, with Young Living, you get uh, access to a whole uh, network of friends and people to support you on this journey. And 